Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to my presentation. Thank you for your time. So uh, today I will be presenting to you uh, on our package, Cricket Data for International uh, Cricket Data. So before I start, I would like to know that uh, in this room, how many people are there who is not from a cricket-loving country? Please raise your hand. Oh, not many. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I am uh, from this part of the world, India, and now I'm here in Australia. So it is a perfect opportunity for me to talk about cricket because I have got such a lovely audience who would be interested. Okay, so. Uh, Traditionally, there was a perception that only men used to play cricket, but we have this beautiful picture of women playing cricket in 1779 in Derby. Uh, however, cricket was invented in England in the 13th century, but it gained popularity in the 17th century. So I have got a fun fact for people who are cricket lovers. <laughs> So uh, earlier, uh, the bowlers used to do underarm bowling. Later, it got changed to roundarm bowling. And this evolutionary change was brought in by a woman <laughs> to avoid entangling her skirt. So I just showed you a picture where they are wearing like nice skirts or gown. How many of you knew that already? Ah, yay. <laughs> So quick facts for our friends who are not so aware about cricket. It involves uh, two teams with 11 players on each side. The objective is to score more runs than your uh, opponent. So I've got a quick uh, cricket field guide. Uh, so this is the cricket pitch. And on both sides, you have the stump or wicket. Uh, so the team who is batting they are responsible for protecting their wicket and scoring more runs. And the team who are on the uh, fielding side, they would have to prevent, uh, prevent the uh, batting team from scoring high. So there are three main protagonists in this game. The batsman, the bowler, and the fielder. So the batsman score runs. The bowler prevents the batsman from doing so, and the fielder would help the bowler in this pursuit. Coming back, uh, there are uh, three formats of this game. Traditionally, uh, uh, cricket was played in test format uh, and, and is played over five days. Uh, the next in line is One Day International, which is being played from 1971, and it has got 50 overs for each side. So one over consists of uh, six balls. So 50 overs is 300 balls. And the most uh, recent format is 2020, which has gained popularity from 2005. It has gone 20 overs uh, for each uh, side. This is 120 balls. OK, so here, any player would have to play the role of all the three protagonists. So you can judge a player in various ways. So if we are talking about a batsman, you can say this player is a good batsman if he has got a good strike rate, the number of fours, the number of sixes, or the total number of uh, runs that he has scored. For a bowler, it can be the number of wickets or the number of maiden overs. I have just highlighted the ones that I might use for my analysis in my later slide, but all the statistics are immensely useful for judging how a player is. Fortunately, we have got all this information in this website, ESPN Crick Info, which is a very sophisticated take on cricket and is popular among cricket lovers. Uh, so they have got a database stats guru which has historical information from the 18th century. So let us have a sneak peek on how to fetch data from ESPN Crick Info. So you go to their website, 
click on stats, players. Type the name of the player that you're interested in, in my case, Ellis Perry, and click on the search. So you have just got one Ellis Perry. Again, click on search. It lands to Ellis Perry's page. Now if you want to know the batting performance of Ellis Perry in test cricket, you have to go here and click. It will land you here. See, now you have this beautiful statistics of El Ellis Perry. But if you want to copy this information, you will have to click on print. Finally, you have this page from where you can copy information in Excel or wherever you want. Challenging, isn't it? So many steps for just finding out the information for one player, for one format. What are the challenges explicitly? So we just saw the number of statistics that can be used for judging batsmen. So collectively, this is a lot of information, and it has the potential to uh, potential to deep dive, right? So user, as I told you, user needs to put like five queries on ESPN website to know the information about one player. Also, even if he does that, there's no efficient way that he can store the tables for any comparative analysis. So here we are presenting our package cricket data, which will open door to more data-driven stories for men's and women's cricket. Hmm. So what does our package cricket data do and what does it contain? So it contains scraper functions for downloading data from ESPN Freak Info. It, has, it contains three main functions, fetch Creek Info, find player ID, and fetch player ID. So if you want to do a macro level analysis, if you want, if you want to look at all the players and get just one best, if you're asking the question, who is the best, then you have to look at all the players. And so you look at the first function. But if you are looking at micro-level analysis, where you are trying to compare individual com performances between th four, five, six, seven, ten players, then you use find player ID or fetch player data. So as you could see here, for Ellis Perry, there is this code that is associated with Ellis Perry. Find player ID exactly helps us achieve that. So if you type the name Ellis Perry in this function, it helps us give the ID. And fetch player data is a function which uses that ID and fetches the, inform fetches the performance data for that player. So using that, let us see how, how we can solve some simple problems and let us then move on to more deeper questions. Which women players have scored consecutive centuries in ODI? So here you have to look at all women players who have played ODI. So you have to use the first function that I explained, fetch creek info. Using fetch creek info, you can fetch the uh, performance for all women who have played ODI. After you have stored it in WBI, in tables, then you can use your deployer grammar of data manipulation. You can use filter, summarize, mutate, select, whatever. You can play around with it and get the desired answer. So uh, this, by the way, also matches with uh, the blog post that ESPN has put up. So the entire point that I'm trying to drive home is uh, you don't have to depend on the stats guru or cricket bloggers for quenching your thirst in cricket. You can ask your own questions, and just using simple functions, you will be able to answer them. And also, you can you know, check facts of uh, the cricket bloggers, if they're correct, what they're putting up or not. So as I told you, there can be various ways in which I can judge a player. So I want to weigh them in terms of risk and return that can, they can give me. Yeah. 
So here, for this purpose of analysis, I have plotted high score of a batsman versus a duck weight. So what is a duck weight? Ducks are when a batsman gets dismissed without scoring any runs. And duck rate is computed as the number of ducks in his career divided by the number of matches that he has played. So for this analysis, I have taken batsmen who has at least played 100 matches to make it more interesting. Um, and this, this plot is also colored by average. So from blue to red, it is lower average to higher average. Now, if the vertical line is the mean duck rate of this set of players, and the horizontal line is the mean high score of this set of players. Now I would want to look at each of these squadrons and see how these players look like. So if you see the first quadrant, which is this one, who are these people? They, they are the people who have duck rates higher than the mean duck rates. And they are also the people who have higher score, higher than the mean high score. Also, their average is quite high because they all have orange or, you know, dip yellow. So these are the people who can give me high rewards, but there is also an associated risk. But if you look at this set of people, they have high score higher than the mean score, duck rates lower than the mean duck rate, and they also have got higher average score because they are all red or orange. So these are the cream set of players who give me the maximum, maximum returns with minimal risk. So it is also important note to note that these are the players who are obviously not out of jobs, right? So they are not, so they are not good batsmen. Here I am analyzing batsmen, so they have not come in the first two quadrants, but they are also good players. But generally, these are the bowlers. Okay. Another thing that I was particularly interested in is how top players behave as they get close to a milestone. So making 100 century is a big milestone for a batsman. And there is a famous saying in cricket, nervous 90s. So as you go, as you make 90, there is an added pressure on you to convert it to a century. So how, how, how do these players behave? They are the victims of nervous 90s. How do the players behave as they are close to 90? So as you can see, when they are less than 40, the players are very vulnerable. They can take risk to, to make more runs. But as they're as they move from 40 to 50, 50 to 90, and 90 to 100, the distribution in which their dismissals, the distribution of their dismissals changes. So for example, Sachin Tendulkar, he always gets dismissed uh, by court. But as he reaches between 90 and 100, the distribution in the other dismissals category increases versus um, Jay Surya who never gets LBW till he is 90, but he always gets dismissed mostly by LBW when he is between 90 and 100. And, and similar observation. Okay, so from the time I have known that I will be presenting this, some of my colleagues has asked me, okay, can you package, uh, tell me who is the greatest batsman in... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, um, from 2000, I was like, okay, yeah, it can tell you if you are more specific. Uh, if you tell me the format and the matrix on which you are judging the player. So uh, here I have taken three three batsmen uh, who have played all the all all the formats of the game in order to make a meaningful comparison. So we have Virat Kohli, Kane Williamson, and David Warner. It's the same guy who got caught in ball tampering earlier this year. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I have, I have plotted the strike rate uh, 
in the y axis strike rate is the number of runs per 100 balls that a batsman faces so as you can see for all the three players the strike rate for t20 is higher than in odi is higher than in test cricket it is very obvious because you had to meet your target in 20 overs in 120 balls in t20 versus in odi where you have to meet your target in 300 balls so that pattern is noticed in all the three players however david warner has a higher strike rate uh, in all the formats if you compare it with the other two players but if you tell me uh, to compare it with the percentage of like the number of runs that they have made across all the formats then there is no clear champion you can see that for david warner particularly in odi the distribution is like there are there is a heavier tail versus uh, Kane Williamson and uh, Virat Kohli who have higher, higher runs in ODI. Also, it's like sequential here, whereas for Kane Williamson and Virat Kohli, you have got like higher uh, strike rate for ODI than in uh, T20. So in, uh, in summary, I would like to say that uh, this does not give you all the functions uh, which will help you to find out all the answers that you are looking for in cricket, but this definitely gives you the power to ask your own questions and solve your own answers for cricket. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. It is scraping. So when you did that theory earlier where you said you could ignore the batsman, um, give him back and he played an ODI, how long would that actually take to scrape all that data back? Very good question. Uh, so his question is, uh, when I am scraping for a batsman, how long would my function take to scrape it? Uh, so for women, since we have got like, uh, not much information it will take like half an hour but for for men it is going to take more than an hour yeah yeah okay Uh, well, for checking the package, I have, I have run it multiple times and I have not faced an issue personally. But uh, if you are facing any concern, then you can write to me and maybe I'll, I'll check. No, I, I mean, <laughs> now it's like if I was doing something wrong and now I can beat the package, it's jumping again. Great, great. Not so much all the mail players, but all the players, all the players. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, do you have any plans to implement scraping for specific scorecards, so game by game, rather than just at a player level? Um, see, for now, as I told you, just we are giving the platform to ask questions and you know know your own answers. We are not trying to make any functions for anything. It is just a scraper function which gives you the uh, all the information in table in a very friendly format so that you can play around with it and find your own answers. We, we have not planned something like that yet. Yes. I didn't get it. Can you come again? I can't remember the details, but there are, there are unusual entries in a few places. Okay. Um, for example, I think you, there are people who sort of retire, where you know, they just need to retire, you sort of play out. 
Yeah, there are very few instances where retired has happened, yeah. I have not faced it personally again. But yeah, I mean, we had to see how consistent the data is, definitely. Yeah. 